Welcome back to Scene Rundown. Let us watch Shogun A Stick of Time. Shogun's seventh episode begins with a flashback in 1554. Lord Toranaga's childhood fight against Mizoguchi, in which he emerged victorious and was given the responsibility of beheading the latter when Mizoguchi committed seppuku. He hoped that in his next life, Mizoguchi will be the one brandishing the blade that would decapitate Toranaga. Although it may seem like a trivial detail, this scene seemed to haunt Toranaga in the present day. After a few years, the story jumps ahead to depict Toranaga's meeting with his estranged brother, Seki Nobutatsu. After the earthquake decimated much of his army, Toranaga needs his support. Following a brief but friendly conversation, Toranaga and his clan accompany Nobutatsu into Ajiro. To maintain Nobutatsu's satisfaction, Toranaga employs Lady Kiku for a week. Gin reportedly consented to a cheap payment in exchange for Toranaga, granting her the right to express her opinions in front of him for a set amount of time, which was determined by using an incense stick known as a time stick. Toranaga wants to tell John not to complicate things and to behave well in front of Nobutatsu, so he enters the conversation. John bemoans his lack of use in this whole Crimson Sky situation and requests access to his ship. He merely tells Toranaga that he is prepared to carry out any task that Toranaga requests of him after realizing that the man will not back down. When Omi tries to speak with Kiku, Jin dismisses him and gives him a hint that John was interested with someone else than Kiku. When Hiromatsu visits Fuji, he offers her the ashes of her husband and kid. Fuji questions Toranaga and Hiromatsu's strategy for the fight for a little while before assuring him that they would undoubtedly prevail in the end. While Nobutatsu is enjoying Ajiro's hospitality, Nagakado is musing about the impending carnage. He is humbled by Yabushigi when he tells him that, in fact, seeking pleasure from a lady is preferable to using violence. Nobutatsu and his soldiers join Toranaga and his clan for dinner. The main focus remains on Nobutatsu and Toranaga. However, Omi briefly teases Buntaro about Mariko's closeness to John. The social gathering takes a somber turn despite the humorous beginning when Nobutatsu talks about Toranaga's adventures as a young warrior who slews Mizuguchi, which excites the ruthless Nagakado. Nobutatsu insists that they talk plans right away, even though Toranaga promises he will meet with him the next day. He then goes to Nagakado and tells him about the occasion when the young Toranaga supposedly soiled his clothes. When he was taken as a captive by the Imatani clan in order to strengthen their ties to the Minowara clan, this seems insulting in this rather professional meeting. Surprisingly, Nobutatsu goes on to reveal that he has accepted Ishido's invitation to become a regent, that he will keep this place a jiro, quarantined until Toranaga makes the decision to give up in Osaka. All exits are blocked by Nobutatsu warriors. In addition, Nagakado is ordered to commit seppuku after he used the cannons in killing Nibara Josen. Toranaga quickly prevents his son from accepting the letter. Nagakado and the others are instructed by Toranaga to wait for him to make a choice in the next 24 hours. John wants to move, but he isn't permitted to. Yabushige receives Igarashi's severed head from Nobutatsu, indicating that Ishido no longer supports Yabushigi. The arrival of Ishido's ship on the Ajiro coast signifies the start of a full-scale invasion. When Nagakado asks Toranaga if he has made the decision to go to war, Toranaga responds to his son that those who are always clamoring for blood are the ones who have never fought. Even still, Nagakado's conceit remains unabashed as he makes fun of Gin for approaching Toranaga to have a conversation. But Toranaga honors his pledge to give her some thought. Toranaga wants to protect everyone, and Gin wants to protect herself and the future of her staff. Gin wonders why Toranaga was so irresponsible, and how that led to this predicament as she sees that he is not going to heed her appeals. Is Toranaga genuinely at a disadvantage, or is this a strategic move? As Omi and Nagakado converse in a separate hot spring about the tranquil times they've left behind and their desire to restore the status quo, Yabushige takes a soak in the hot springs as they wait for a response. 
Nobutatsu enters and interrupts Nagakado and Omi's chat, stating that he doesn't want to pass away in an unsightly way. When Nagakado cries out that a warrior's death is lovely and all that, Nobutatsu humbles him by pointing out that death and beauty are not the same thing. Yabashige approaches John for a sparring session while he watches the ships off the coast of Ajiro, hoping that John will be able to defend himself if his pistols fail. This gives the naive Buntaro the chance to attempt John's death. He becomes aware of his foolishness and discovers that John has no fear of dying, thus he then leaves the scenario. Nagakado approaches Fuji while she is practicing in the woods for the upcoming combat. He explains to her that he ought to have confronted Ishido first. Fuji's spouse and child would still be alive at that point. Fuji only informs him that considering what might have happened in the past is useless, and that they should focus on what can be done now. The action then switches to Toronaga drafting his will, but Buntaro, who is for John's life, stops him in his tracks. According to Toronaga, Buntaro must kill both Mariko and John if he believes that they are having an affair. Buntaro goes away when Mariko accepts the proposal because he lacks the bravery to do it. Mariko, embarrassed by the entire exchange, begs Toronaga to put an end to her suffering, but he refuses. Ultimately, Toronaga chooses to meet Nobutatsu in a public setting. Prior to the arrival of his half-brother, Toronaga corrects a misinformation about his bravery. He did not use a single blow to decapitate Mizoguchi. General Hiromatsu is the one behind 12-year-old Toranaga in that flashback. Hiromatsu claimed that Toranaga needed nine careless blows to decapitate him, demonstrating how phony and false most tales of valor are. The fleeting moment of humor is tempered by Nobutatsu's appearance. He is informed by Toranaga that he would give up in Osaka. Toranaga surrenders despite everyone's best efforts to stop him. John storms out of the meeting, you will all die, calling everyone names, notably Toranaga. They just all let him leave. When Nobutatsu has had enough of Lady Kiku's services, at the end of Shogun Episode 7, the young Nagakado confronts him with the goal of killing him. When Nagakado trips on Nobutatsu's damp robe, he fell on his head on a rock and bleeds to death. The entire procedure goes horribly wrong. Recalling his discussion with Nagakado, Nobutatsu emphasizes his belief that death is devoid of beauty. What effect will this now have on the plot? So it will be another bloodbath until next time. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe for more videos.